Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord our God be with you all. May he give you peace in this day of turmoil. We are in the time of sorrows. Never doubt that. We are at the end of our times. As people in Turkey and Syria today have found out, the end is near. May we pray for our brothers and sisters, for our neighbours in these countries, but not just here, everywhere, because the time of sorrows is worldwide. At any moment, any one of us could be in that very event or type of event. We need to keep everyone in our prayers. But the surety that we learn from this is any one of us face our end unexpectedly. No one can measure their own life. No one can say, I am going to go die on such and such a date. Even if a hospital tells you, they don't know for sure because Jesus may cure you. You don't know, you cannot know unless you are God. He is the only one that knows. So for every one of us, this is a possibility in this day. We are definitely, most definitely in the time of sorrows. And when we read our Bibles, we know all of the things that will happen in this time. And he said, be not troubled. Don't be troubled. He is with us. But then we have to stop and think, how many of those beautiful people in the countries we've just seen being devastated, how many of those beautiful people were saved? And I don't mean physically, I mean before death, saved in the grace of God. How many were lost souls? Not because they were wicked, not because they were evil people, not because they did wickedly. Some would have, but you look in every country, yes, you have these violent, vile people, but the majority are very nice people. They simply have not accepted the grace of God. They refused God's grace. There are people who, in our modern day, feel that they have accepted grace. But to accept grace is not a flimsy, throwaway comment. There was an old saying, and it was very true, and it was used very much in courts, in law, courts of law. I don't know if they still use it today. It was an oath that was taken. Everyone would swear to tell the truth. And it went, I won't do it as an oath because we aren't to take oaths. But the crutch of the whole thing was, I will, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Are Christians doing this today? Are we telling the truth? Yes. But are we telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Or are we adding bits in of our thoughts? Are we leaving out the less desirable parts of the truth? What are we doing when we are speaking to others? And we hear it so much. <laughs> I do listen to other channels, of course I do. And I am troubled many times because I hear someone telling this little bit of truth and then weaving a web of lies around that truth. Maybe in their hearts they're not 
They don't believe they're lying. But by leaving out the most important things, it turns the truth into a lie. We have to be so careful when we're listening to others as well as when we're speaking to others. Sometimes it is hard to tell the whole truth. It really is because we don't want to upset someone. We have taken into ourselves by reading our Bibles and trusting in what the Bible says, we have taken into ourselves the whole soup. We've taken in the vegetables, the broth, the meat. We have taken all the nourishment into ourselves. I talk a lot about food, don't I? I'm sorry. I like cooking. Um, not usually healthy foods, but I enjoy it. So my mind thinks about food a lot. Um, but we take it in ourselves. We fill ourselves with the goodness, with the, with the, the word, the whole word. When God says something, we listen to it and we listen to what he said over here as well and we put it all together. Excuse me, my, my top for some reason is not staying on my shoulders. Um, so we are putting all of this into ourselves and we are heaping upon ourselves the word and filling ourselves to capacity. And then we come across our friends who are living in the secular world who haven't accepted Christ. And when we speak to them, we tell them all the good stuff. We give them the cake. We give them the lolly. There's no nutrition in it. There's energy. There's energy in it. But there's no nutrition. It's not satisfying them. It's not healing them. Because without the whole truth, you can't heal. And so we're letting these people have just that sweetness on the top. We need to tell them the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. And if it offends them, and they move away from us. That's all right because that's when the Holy Spirit will work in them. When we tell them the truth, remember Jesus is the truth and the life. When we tell these people the whole truth and nothing but the truth, don't just give them the sweet sugars. Tell them the whole depth of nourishment when we tell them the whole truth they look they come to faith by hearing the Word of God if they didn't hear the Word of God and the Word of God is truth they can't come to faith so we give them the Word of God and once you hear the word of God, then the Holy Spirit will work. You and I aren't out there working and, and trying to, now, do you understand what I mean and this and this and this? No. We are speaking to them as our loved friends. We are giving them the word, the truth. It's up to them to accept or not, but it doesn't mean that on the moment when they, oh, it's too much, and they walk away, they're walking away, and the Holy Spirit is walking with them. They've heard it. So now they've got to make their decision. But the Holy Spirit doesn't leave them without any help. It's going with them now that they've heard the truth, and it's going to explain it in their soul, in their heart. <coughs> then they will make their decisions. So this is the beauty of the Holy Spirit. This is the beauty of, of God's the word. Lights, I've been listening to a young man speaking on here and he's a beautiful young man, but he gets, he hasn't got 
the full knowledge of his Bible. And he is confused because he hasn't put it all together yet. But he's young. He's a young man. And he is studying, but he hasn't got the bits together yet. But I can see him coming together every time he speaks. So we don't mock the young ones. And I don't necessarily mean young in age, young in Christ. Those that have only recently come and are trying to do their, their bit for the kingdom. So I listen and I, I do sometimes give a little advice. But mostly I listen and hear them. The Holy Spirit is leading them. And you can hear their progress. And this happens also to these people we are speaking to. The Holy Spirit will bring on the increase. It's not you and me that are winning victories. You hear people say, I want a victory for Christ. No, you didn't. Jesus won the victory. You were a cog in the wheel. But Jesus Christ did the work. Remember, he's the main, he's the main actor in, in this situation. It's all about him. We only put words out there that he's already spoken. <laughs> Do you realise when we tell people about Jesus, about our God, we're only repeating his words. We don't do it. It's his words that do it. I love that. But we have to be faithful when we tell his words. Now, I wanted to tell you about how easy it is to not be faithful. When somebody is is speaking to us and we're telling them about Jesus the common thing that is said today is come as you are works is works is of the devil works is um, we don't have to do works for salvation we shouldn't do works some say because then you're going back to the old laws we are telling new believers, come as you are, works is changing, don't change, stay as you are. It tickles their ears that, what? I can keep going to the clubs and the pubs, I can keep on partying, I can do all of this and I'll still go to heaven just because I came as I am? That's what happens when you take a small part of the truth. Just give the cake and there's that big pot of soup sitting there and you've never told them the soup. You've never fed them the soup, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You let them live in a lie that yes, we come as we are. Because some of us don't have time to change. You, you can't change yourself before you come to Christ. You come as you are. If you are living in iniquity, if you are a murderer, if you are... Oh, the thing I don't like... Oh, no, I won't say it. But if you are doing any of those sinful things... We all are sinners. I am still a sinner. We cannot change our flesh. All we can do is put ourselves in Christ's hands. Yes, we come as we are. But you must tell them if you accept the grace of God. A lot of people don't know they have to accept it. And if you accept it, Remember what the grace is. For the grace of God 
has come unto all men to teach them to forsake ungodliness and live righteously in this hour. So once you accept it, you give up, you repent, you turn away from your sins. Yes, we will stumble. But if we stumble, the grace of God will teach us. Hey, that wasn't right. Come on, let's get up and move forward. The grace is not going to say, well, stay back there in the back. The bus is going forward. You don't want to stay at the bus stop. Because that's where you're putting people if you don't tell them the whole truth, that grace changes you. It is the grace of God that changes you. You can't change yourself. You can't heal yourself. It is Jesus the healer. And until they have accepted that Jesus is the healer, they will stay at the bus stop or in the hospital waiting room. They'll never move into the rooms where healing is taking place. They will never meet Jesus. And they will be the ones that he says, Depart. I never knew you. You never got on the bus. You never let grace change your life. Because someone didn't tell you. Grace changes you. They give you this cake of grace. And they say, Here, God said, By grace you are saved. Here is grace. And they only give them the icing on the cake. They only give them the cake, not the meal. The meal is how does grace save you? Yes, most assuredly, the only way grace is in existence is that Jesus Christ took your sins. He bore them on the cross. He wore that crown of thorns. Remember when when man sinned, the earth gave forth the thorns. That was sin in the world. Even to the symbology of the thorns that came out of the ground because of sin, those thorns were pushed into the skull of Christ. He bore everything, even the thorns of the earth. He healed everything. The earth also was corrupt in those days, remember? Everything was corrupt, even the plants, the thorns. And he even took that, every single thing he took, so that you may have forgiveness. It was done. He took it all. There is nothing he didn't take for you. And he died for you. And he rose on the third day for you, taking back life from death. And he did it all for you. Grace was given so that once you can't do it on your own. There is no human being that can clean themselves up on their own. That is the grace. He did it all. He took it all. And then he said, now here, I will give you my servant. Grace. And through grace, you will be saved. Not by anything you've done yourself. You couldn't clean yourself up. But grace is about to help you. Grace is about to teach you. You have to give them the whole story. Not that just that there's this grace in a box that is going to do it. You've got to tell them what grace is going to do. If they don't know that grace is going to teach them to live godly and righteously, if they don't know that Grace is going to teach them to turn away from wickedness and from sin and to 
convict them when the Holy Spirit enters of their sins that they don't do it again. If they don't know that, they're not looking for that. If you've told them that grace says that you can't do anything, if grace says you can't do anything, if, you, if that's what you've told them, you're sending them to that part of judgment where Jesus says, get away, I didn't know you, because they never entered into the fellowship with him. He cannot fellowship with ongoing sinners. He went to heal and to lead. If you don't want to be led, if you don't know that you are to follow, you must tell them they must follow the shepherd. The shepherd's not leading them into sin. The shepherd is leading them away from sin, away from danger of hell. It's the whole meal that they need. So that's the that's an important thing. There's so many important things. We do not know the day or the hour that any one of us is to pass. This time of sorrows, God is in this. How many times in the Old Testament do you hear God say, I sent them floods, I sent them earthquakes, I sent them um, storms, I sent them all of these things to warn them and they did not repent. These are the warnings. God is sending warnings for people to stop and think. We used to call all of these things acts of God. That's what everything that was an act of God was called. It was called an act of God because people knew these were sent by God to shake up the people. And in many cases, people did. They turned and what are we doing? And they changed and their land and their world around them revived. They turned from their sins. Now they've taken that comment out. No longer are things an act of God. Or the new one, the insurance companies are putting in the other gods. There's an ad on our television now. What used to be a storm, an act of God. Now they're calling it an act of Z-U-S-E. The Nor Norse god. I think he's the Norse one. Zeus? Greek. Greek. Oh, I get them muddled up. There's so many of them, isn't there? Thousands and thousands. All the fallen angels wanted to be called gods, didn't they? Oh, dear. It's, it is getting wicked. The modern world is elevating all the old gods back again putting them in movies as heroes. They were not heroes. They did not care for humanity. They are fallen angels, no doubt about it. They do have power, but they do not have the power of God. But we have to stop and think, have we given people enough knowledge that if the day of their death came today, do they know how to be saved? Did we just give them that little bit and they didn't know they had to accept grace, that they had to walk in repentance? Did we not tell them that? Or did we give them this fairy tale image of what salvation was did we mislead them through our words through our omission I pray that we will all remember that every time we speak about our salvation 
that we let people know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. God is patient. And yes, he will when he sees someone he loves. He will give opportunity as best that that person will accept. But remember, we have asked him to use us. We have asked him to say, I am here, use me. Let me work for the kingdom. So when we work for the kingdom, remember, give them the meat. Give them the whole truth. If you're going to speak about one thing, don't give them just the icing on the top. Make sure you give them, in. if it's one message, make sure it's the whole of that message. Tell them what it is. Define grace. Don't make it out to be something that it isn't. It's not a magic pill. It's an element of God's forgiveness. It's important. It's precious. And it's not going to be spilled on filth. It's not going to go into a cesspool. It will put its hand down and raise you from that cesspool. But if you don't cling on to it, it can't. You must tell them what grace is. Any day, any one of us could be um, called up yonder to account for ourselves. Those that are saved, when we're called up, our accounting is in Jesus' book of life. All of our sins are forgiven and forgotten because of what Jesus did for us, because we walked in his grace. But those souls that didn't walk in the grace of God, those that were deluded, thinking, oh, his grace will just, no matter what I do, I don't have to change. Who told them that? And if you hear someone that believes that, warn them. We must warn them because they're going to meet Jesus. He will not accept someone who has not accepted the true grace. So, we are so close. You and I, we are hanging in there for the coming of our Lord. We know it's close. We know it's any moment, but even those that are left behind, I don't know what it is we've got. Insects. We've not had them for years. And suddenly insects everywhere. Don't know how they're coming. Sorry. Just a passing thought. Never had this before. Can't see them and just know they're there. Um, I guess it's all part of this world. It's corrupting. Even where we dwell, there's corruption that we can't we can't put our finger on. But it's here, and it's out in the world, and the world is full of corruption, and we must tell them. We must, in our, in our love for the Christ, tell them that to follow Jesus, he will lead you if you follow him. And he will come and seek you out if you have strayed a bit, as long as you are his sheep. But to be his sheep, to be in the flock, you must accept the true grace of God. 
it's got to be the true grace, not the Hollywood grace, not the grace of Satan. His grace is a do-as-you-will grace because he wants to lead you to where he is. He hates you. Come to God. He has a true grace and it is powerful. It will teach you. It will, with the Holy Spirit, convict you of your, of your sins and you will turn away. But if you're not being convicted, if your neighbour is not being convicted of their sins, they don't have the grace. They don't have the Holy Spirit convicting them. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not saved. Maybe no one told them they needed it. So that's 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 what I'm going to end with today. We can't wait too long for this. Jesus is coming for us very, very soon. Some will be left behind. Pray for them. Continue praying for one another. You need you need one another. The prayers of the saints will do much. We pray for one another. That's our duty. Keep each one in prayer. If you see any name in any comments, in any channels, pray for them, especially if they have asked for prayer. But even if they haven't asked for prayer, pray for them. Pray for the people in... It's too late to pray for the dead. But we can pray for the living, that they find Christ. That they find the truth. See, there is something there. We must pray for one another. God is calling us. But he wants to save as many as he can. And if we leave the seed here when we go, if we leave the truth here when we go, do you see how many people, seeing that we have gone, where we planted that seed will grow when they see the truth of what we've said about our going? They will remember and that seed will be in their heart and the fact that we have shown the truth is true when God took us we told them the meat so that when we left they knew it was true that will have fertile growth and they will see it was true and that will give them the courage to be the tribulation saints. God shows us the truth that we may believe. He has done this in the past. He has said it in the Bible that they saw this so that they may believe. This happened so they may believe. And when they see us go, there will be some that believe if we have told them the truth. If we didn't tell them the truth, they will believe the lie that will come after. We were abducted by aliens. The earth spat us out because we were corruption. We were hanging on to the old world and not the new. All these lies will be percolating. But unless we tell them the truth, they will believe the lies because they have nothing to cling to. They are that seed that fell by the wayside. They've got nothing to cling on to.
They're on a rock that has no nutrition. There is nothing to cling to. They are like the seed that fell and the bird came and ate it. There was nothing to cling to. But if we tell them the whole truth, that will set roots down. And when we go, that will water it and it will bud in their heart and they shall be saved. Now is the time to tell if you have friends who know these people in these war-torn areas, in these earthquake regions, anywhere that things are happening that are biblical, tell them. Tell them the truth. Tell them about Jesus Christ, what he did for them. Tell them of their hope. Because we have hope. We have faith. And we have a mighty God. A mighty God that will come for us. And if they are left, he will still be with them. And to the end. And until we meet, may God be with you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace, the peace beyond all understanding in this time of troubles. For we are truly in the time of sorrows. Don't stay for the great tribulation. Come home with Christ, because the shepherd is collecting his flock very soon. Listen for his voice. And follow the path. God bless you all until we meet again, here or there. Amen. Love you all.